Hi, this is Doug Taylor, your host at the Olympic Climate Report. Here, in collaboration with the wonderful people at Olympic Climate Action, we're going to be presenting you with news and views, information and inspiration that you can take to make you a much more effective force in the battle for climate action ahead. Our theme this year is Climate Action 2021, A New Beginning. And in our first episodes, we've talked about the new administration in Washington and the Climate Action Team, the extremely strong Climate Action Team that the Joseph Biden administration will be bringing to the federal government. And then we talked about a more local effort the Washington State Climate Assembly, this wonderful effort at a participatory democracy approach to action on the climate front. The Washington Climate Assembly is being held through March right here in Washington, and it's being held virtually, and you can check it out at their YouTube channel and on their website if you'd like to keep up with the story of the Washington Climate Assembly and what that's about. We gave a nice little introduction, I thought, to the assembly, and feel free to refer to that, uh, where we kind of discuss where this assembly came from, how it got going. But this week's headline, it's a corker. To use a very old word, to go with a really old guy telling the story. It's a corker. Today's headline, U.S. Senator declares war on fossil fuel obstructionists. Think about that for a moment. Now, if you keep up with climate stories, you'll probably already have guessed, if you didn't already know, that that senator was Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island, Democrat. Nine years ago, when our last effort to get a climate action proposal through the United States Congress failed for want of support, from a Democratic administration. Senator Whitehouse was depressed. He was let down. But he was never defeated. He began a series of speeches in the well of the U.S. Senate on a weekly basis for nine long, dark years Senator Whitehouse has addressed the Senate on climate action and the climate emergency 279 times. And in this last week behind us, in the last week of January of 2021, mark that on your historical calendar, Senator Whitehouse gave his final It's time to wake up, address. He said it was his final speech because he doesn't need to do it anymore, because we've woken up, because the country is awake to the issue, because people are alerted to the problem, and because we have an administration now in Washington that we have reason to believe if we're behind this, and keep them moving in the right direction, can take real action on the climate front. That's a big story, and it's going to last a while. But before we go on, let's listen a little bit to a few of the things that the senator has to say on that. I really like this. He agrees with me. He must be incredibly smart. Senator? All of this can break the right way. The dark castle of denial can fall. And Congress can rise in bipartisan force to stop the harm and cure the damage. But that's not foreordained. We can still screw this up. No doubt about it. So let's not. 
Let's do our duty. The conditions are at last, at last, in place for a real solution. A new dawn is breaking. And when it's dawn, there's no need for my little candle against the darkness. My little time to wake up pilot light can now go out. So instead of urging that it's time to wake up, I close this long run by saying now it's time to get to work. White House, time to wake up run. Farewell. White House, at least on time to wake up, out. Think about that. Think of history's great battles and contests, legislative or otherwise, and consider in how many of those battles either side was sure it would win. If you limit yourself to battles you're sure you can win, you're pretty much sure to miss the most important battles. And we lost this one for that most lamentable of reasons, failure to try. The fossil fuel industry, sure enough, knew it won this one once it saw the Obama administration walk off the field, abandoning Speaker Pelosi's hard-fought victory. And then years went by in which you could scarcely get a democratic administration to put the words climate and change into the same paragraph, in which we fussed idiotically about whether to call it climate change or global warming, in which the bully pulpit, the great presidential megaphone in the hands of one of our most articulate presidents, stood mute. We quavered about polling, showing climate as issue eight or issue 10, ignoring that we had a say in that outcome when we wouldn't even use the phrase, let alone make the case. No wonder the public didn't see climate change as a priority. Those were, for me, dark, desolate days. So I made a commitment to speak about climate change every single week we were in session, no matter what. What? Wait, dog, wait. Hey, you said there was a declaration of war here. I mean, I didn't see any declaration of war. Well, what are you doing here? Getting into clickbait? Trying to get more viewers by having clickbait headlines? No, of course, I would not do such of a thing. You think, you think clickbait headlines might get me more viewers? No, no, I, I would not. I would not do such a thing. Uh, I just saved this one for last because I think it's a very important part of the speech because this is really the place where Senator Whitehouse is quite aggressive in his language. And I want to share that with you because I think it's an important part of his message going forward. So once again, 
Uh, let's uh, listen to uh, Senator Whitehouse's declaration of war on the fossil fuel oligarchs. Then we had to deal with the Trump years, when sins of omission became sins of commission, and questions of commitment became questions of corruption. I'm personally confident that evidence will reveal that the Trump administration was, in fact, corrupt on climate issues, and not just corrupt in the meaning of the Founding Fathers, but corrupt in the meaning of the United States Criminal Code. And I will do my level best to make sure we find out. Thank goodness we can put that disgraceful period of our history behind us. I learned the ways the industry hid the money trail leading to its front groups through shell corporations, through donors' trust, through 501c4s. And I finally came to the realization that this industry was running a massive covert operation. Probably the biggest covert disinformation and political intimidation op in history. And it was running this covert op in and against our own country. I came with groups of senators to the floor to identify and call out this corrupt and corrupting fossil fuel web of denial. I came to know and admire the tough band of investigators, writers, and academic researchers who examine and document this corrupt apparatus. I saw how this apparatus insinuated itself into the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and the National Association of Manufacturers and turned those two business groups into America's two worst climate obstructors. Thank you, Influence Map, for that research. So, there we have it. Certainly a call to action, if not an outright declaration of war by Senator Whitehouse. Are we ready to follow him? Because the people do need to know about this web of deceit. We need to know what has been done and how they did this to us and what the truths are that they've been hiding from us. Because only then will we understand the depth of our peril. So, are you ready to sign up? Uncle Sam needs you. You ready to fight them in the courts? Fight them in the halls of government? Fight them across the nation and around the world? Are you ready to never surrender? Now, I'm asking you today to do one simple thing, but this is something we can do this week. Take one action. Call and email your senators, Maria Cantwell and Patty Murray. These are our senators at the nation's capital, and you can call them just as simply as picking up your phone. I don't need to give you their email or their phone number. Pick up your smartphone, type in their names, and tell them that you support Senator Whitehouse on climate action and on a full justice and truth investigation and a report to the American people on the outrage of this disinformation attack on Americans and on people everywhere. Uncle Sam and Mother Earth need you. Let's get to work.